I want to start by saying I don't like the Big Bang. I mean, the Big Bang uh, theory, the show itself is awesome, but the theory itself, I don't have to like it. I still accept it. Because in science, you know, if evidence shows something uh, should be something else, then you should trust it until you find something else. So that's why, I mean, although I don't really like it, um, I have to accept it. I mean, mentally, sort of cognitively, I have some problems with it, as a lot of people do, and I think that's okay. So let me just talk about the proof for it, because there's some very strong evidence for it. And if you have another theory that's going to explain the universe, it had better explain these two, for example, among other things. And the Big Bang Theory explains these really well. In fact, it predicted a lot of things. And isn't it true? The best theories, they should not only explain existing phenomena, they should uh, use, be used to predict. That's something that's really important for NOS. Remember, that's nature of science. So let's talk about this. First of all, uh, red-shifted galaxies. That's one key piece of evidence. What this is, is that if you look at the spectrum from a galaxy, so this is a real galaxy called the Whirlpool Galaxy. Isn't it cool? It's two actually sort of galaxies here that are interacting. You can tell that because there's a tidal tail going along here like this. Um, so the Whirlpool Galaxy, if we did a spectrum, you know, we take the light from this, put it through a prism, we can actually break it down into its components. We can spot some different elements that we recognize. But the problem is these elements will actually be shifted. So this is an example here. Remember, so like if you're looking in the lab, maybe you see this particular pattern of uh, spectral lines. And if it was a nearby star, do you notice it'll have the same pattern. It'll just be shifted over a little bit. A nearby galaxy might be shifted a bit more. A distant galaxy might be like this. That's what like the whirlpool is. It's sort of a, you know, nearby to distant galaxy, something around here. That means things will actually be shifted. Do you notice that where these spectral lines were found before, let's just compare them here. So we had this spectral line right here. Let's just say like that one, this uh, big, dark, thick band here. Let's just say it went all the way over to here. Do you notice that it went, you know, from here to here? Do you notice that? Like it started here, way up on this distant galaxy, it was over here. So look at that, it corresponds to there. Do you see how it's actually been shifted? And it's been shifted to larger wavelengths. That's why we call it red shifted, because larger wavelengths are redder. It doesn't literally mean they become more red. Well, actually, there's something called reddening. That happens too. But um, the very fact that the universe itself is expanding, this is the thinking behind it is this. If the universe itself is expanding, doesn't it make sense that it would take, you know, let's just assume this is a very simplistic way to draw it, though. It's not entirely correct, but it's you know, it's a good way to think of it. Imagine then you have this sort of wave like this right here. I did a really bad job of that wave. Uh, let me do try again. So let's just say I like a, some sort of wave like this right here. And as the universe expands, what would it do? It would stretch it out. So maybe then it becomes sort of more like this. You know, so just imagine it's like a thing that's just been pulled. If it's been pulled, it's a larger wavelength, isn't it? And that's the, one of the explanations for redshift. Is that could the the reason why they could all be shifted towards more red or larger wavelengths is because they're moving away from us. Now, it turns out that's the thing right here. This galaxy spectral lines are shifted to longer wavelengths, so they're redder, and that's explained by the Doppler effect. Right, and this is done, um, you know, in in the core, at least, um, when we talk about, oh no, it's an HL, but um, a Doppler effect is something that explains that, you know, if something, uh, like if a sound is set to higher frequencies, it's a similar idea here. I like this little thing here, if the sticker is blue, you're driving too fast, why is that? Because blue means, blue shifted means something's coming towards you. Red shifted means it's going away from you. So it turns out when you look at pretty much every galaxy you can look at, they're all red shifted, they're all going away from us which is really weird. Uh, now there's a few exceptions. There's a few galaxies that are in what we call our local group, our, our local hood, like Andromeda galaxy. Those would actually be blue shifted. So it's coming towards us. It hopefully makes sense. The close ones are gravitationally attracted to us, but the far ones are more um, affected by the universe's expansion. So one of the ideas is that, well, if everything is, you know, red shifted, that's explained, you know, the idea is that, oh, well, maybe the universe itself is expanding. That was the idea behind it. Right? If everything's going away from us, either we're particularly repulsive or everything is expanding. So we think everything is expanding. And then it makes sense. If everything's expanding, doesn't it make sense to think about, well, then maybe everything was together. So this is one thing, this is one strong piece of evidence for a so-called Big Bang. So it's this idea that the universe, at some point then, if it's all expanding, it makes sense that at some point in time, the universe was literally a point. And something caused it to 
blow up and expand. Now, the reason I don't like the theory is because I don't like what it means, but I don't have to like it. I accept it because I have to accept it. I can't think of anything better. So for example, if you're going to come up with a theory of the universe, it better explain redshift to galaxies because that we see. Right? And I don't like what it means because, I mean, what happened before the Big Bang? Oh, we don't know. Uh, if the universe is expanding, what's it expanding into? Like, my brain has trouble with that. Like, don't worry about it. It doesn't make sense. We don't know. It's like, uh, you know, what caused the Big Bang itself to happen? Oh, we don't know. Have there been other Big Bangs in the past? Maybe the universe has done some weird things. We don't know. Because the problem is the only information we can get is from light. Uh, what I think is really interesting about astronomy is this. I mean, the history of the universe is sort of encoded in the light from the stars and galaxies. So we can only tell information about the universe based on what's emitting light. And if it's part of our universe, then it had to happen after the Big Bang, which means we don't have information of what happened before the Big Bang. It's just theoretical. The only things we can tell is, you know, further away things, we can tell that that happened longer time ago. That's about all we can tell. So we have some limits to this. Turns out we can look at what's the most distant objects we can find. Uh, we can also use some different theories, different calculations, and all of them seem to point to the universe is about 13.7 billion years old. It seems to be the age of the universe. So redshifted galaxies are strong evidence for Big Bang. Even better is this. It's called the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, or CMB. See what that comes from? See, it comes from this here, right? So CMB. So cosmic microwave background radiation. It was predicted that if there was a Big Bang like this and the universe was expanding, it should cool. Um, and so because of this, and they could figure out the essentially the, um, well, because the wavelength as you go you know, larger, the wavelength will go down. Uh, sorry, uh, we'll go up, sorry. And that means the energy should go down because E equals HF, if you remember that equation, E equals HF, which is HC over lambda. So if the wavelength gets bigger, the energy right here gets smaller. So they could actually predict, they mean some very clever astronomers, they could figure out uh, what this radiation should look like now. So if it happened 13.7 billion years ago, what should the radiation be like now? And it wasn't just one value, remember? It's this whole spread of data. So they could figure out basically what should be the peak uh, wavelength. Remember we have this other equation that the uh, wavelength times the temperature is equal to some constant, uh, which means basically that wavelength and temperature are kind of related. So if you can know, they could figure out basically the temperature of this because they could figure out the wavelength that should be remaining you know, after it's been stretched out. And it turns out they could calculate all this and you can get an equation that looks like this. Look, there's an exponential here. Now you don't have to know this for the um, astrophysics option itself. But, uh, and I'm sorry about this, some people might get offended by this, but actually it was done by a guy named Randall Monroe. Uh, his website is called, oops, it's called XKCD. It's a brilliant website. Uh, and one of the things he did, he said, science, it works, bitches. Not literally, right? Just like an expression. Uh, don't want anyone to get offended here. But um, what happened is this. They could predict then the shape of this whole uh, data here. Now here they've done it in frequencies, but that can be done in wavelengths. And that can also be done in temperature. Just keep in mind, so frequency, wavelength, and temperature, although they're not the same, they sort of relate to each other. And basically they predicted that there should be a peak sort of a wavelength, a peak wavelength that corresponds to a temperature of 2.76 Kelvin. That should be the sort of black body temperature of the overall universe. It should be pervasive. What's kind of fun is that um, a little while later, there's two guys named Penzias and Wilson. They were looking at uh, the night sky for totally different reasons, but everywhere they looked with their fancy new telescope here, uh, they, could, they could catch this extra signal. It was pervasive. It didn't matter where they looked. It was always the same. Uh, so it turns out then if you do that data, what he's done here, he's drawn here, see this, this uh, curve? That corresponds to that equation that was predicted from uh, basically from CMB. So they predicted using math that there should be a shape that should look like this. Now what's interesting is interlaced on it. See these dots here? Those are the data points that these guys found. So it's one of those examples where, remember in science, not only did this Big Bang theory explain existing things, it predicted the existence of a pervasive cosmic microwave background that should correspond to a temperature of 2.76. In fact, they could map out all the different data points that it should do. And in real life, all of it matches. And it matches exactly 
which is awesome. That's why he was excited and said, science, it works, bitches. Uh, so it says the universe expands and cools. The wavelength increases, so the energy goes down. Predicted one should be isotropic. And what does that mean? It means no matter which direction you look, it should be the same. It should, should be the same. By the way, I forgot to put it. It should also be, uh, whoops, should also be homogenous. Homogenous means actually literally the same. Everywhere, like in same in like space. Homogenous. Also, she should be homogeneous, should be isotropic, and should have a peak wavelength of 2.76 Kelvin. So that's why, although I don't like the theory of Big Bang, I accept it fully because, come on, this is really pretty strong evidence. No one's come up with anything better than this. Well, people would argue they have, but this is by far the winning one. Um, so here's an example from an exam question. So the hot Big Bang theory has some characteristics predicted regarding the CMB. State two of these characteristics. Well... We could state any of these three, isotropic, homogeneous, or temperature. So maybe we could say that. So we could say peak, temperature. Remember, because that's the wavelength here. That's a lambda max corresponding to a temperature of 2.76 degrees Kelvin. That could be one of them. I mean, if you're supposed to do two, you could do that. You could do isotropic, which means same in all directions. Or you could say homogeneous, right? Any of these two would work. So in that sense, it's pretty easy, right? It's not that hard. So the questions they're going to ask you are fairly straightforward, but what they mean is super deep and actually really interesting. 